Hi, everyone. I want to keep this short. You all know about the great products here at Old Time Radio DVD. Well, now's the time to purchase. Why now? Just can't afford to keep on doing this forever for free. So go to oldtimeradiodvd.com. Take advantage of our great pricing. Palmolive Soap, your beauty hope, and luster cream shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. Not very many of us like to get up early in the morning, but our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, doesn't seem to mind at all. No, in fact, I get quite a kick out of waking up in the morning because it offers proof positive that I managed to live through the day before. (laughs) However, last Wednesday, my landlady, Mrs. Davis, woke me at what seemed like an excessively early hour. Connie, get up, Connie. Why? Because it's 6 a.m., and I'm leaving the house early, and there are several things I want you to do for me. Like what, for instance? Like feeding our cat, Minerva, at five minutes after seven. But why don't you feed her now? Why, Connie, you ought to know better than that. Minerva never gets up until seven. (laughs) I'm sorry, I lost my head. (laughs) That cat certainly doesn't lead a dog's life. But why are you leaving the house so early, Mrs. Davis? I've got to visit my sister, Angela. I received a message from her during the night. Oh? I hope nothing's wrong. No, she's quite well, she said. She just wants to see me. She must have called pretty late. I didn't hear the phone ring at all. Oh, she didn't phone, Connie. Was it a wire? No. Special delivery letter? No. (laughs) Walkie-talkie? Pigeon? Before I use up my 20 questions, how did you hear from your sister? Well, you know how absent-minded Angela is. Yes. And you probably haven't noticed it, but lately I've been growing quite absent-minded, too. I've noticed it. (laughs) Last night, I finally arrived at a point where Angela and I were tuned to the same wavelength. She reached me by mental telepathy. How did she come over, AM or FM? (laughs) You can joke if you like, but I know just as surely as I'm standing here that Angela wants to see me immediately. So um, I'll have to leave right after breakfast. All right, Mrs. Davis. It'll do you good to get out of the house for a change anyway. Now, what did you want me to do for you? Do for me? Yes. You said when you woke me that there were several things you wanted me to do? I did. Yes. In connection with your leaving the house this morning? But I didn't leave the house this morning. I know, but you're going to. I am. I must be tuned in on the wrong wavelength. I'll see you at breakfast, Mrs. Davis. Well, how did you like your breakfast, Connie? Fine, Mrs. Davis. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll get ready to go to school. Mr. Boynton's picking me up. Oh, good. Well, I'll finish these dishes before I go, Connie. Oh, I'll get it. Coming! Well, if it isn't our school custodian, Mr. Jensen. If it isn't your school custodian, Mr. Jensen, then what? (laughs) What? When you opened the door, you said, well, if it isn't our school custodian, Mr. Jensen. Mm -hmm. Then I said, if it isn't your school custodian, Mr. Jensen, then what? (laughs) Catching people saying things that don't take any real meaning is a hobby of mine. Oh, that's very cute, Mr. Jensen. Won't you come in? Oh, thank you, Miss Brooks. Oh, that's better. What's better? (laughs) Look, Mr. Jensen. Look at what? I don't mean look. I mean listen. I'm in kind of a hurry. What kind? (laughs) The usual kind. To leave the house and get to school. Therefore, your hobby doesn't have the charm for me it might have at some other time. (laughs) I guess you've got me there. Where? Oh, great. (laughs) You've got me doing it. 
Never mind, Mr. Jensen. What can I do for you? Well, you can open up the school this morning if you will, Miss Brooks. I talked to Mr. Conklin on the phone, and he said to give you the key. Oh. Here it is. It's this fat little devil with the blue ribbon on it. Oh, I thought that was your tie. Oh. <laughs> to the school. But why don't you open up as usual? Oh, because I have another stop to make before I go to school that might cause me to be tardy. Another stop? Yes, the maternity hospital. <laughs> My wife is going to have a baby. Why, Mr. Jensen? Well, I don't know, just because I guess. <laughs> It's our sixth child, Miss Brooks. Honestly, Mr. Jensen? Well, I didn't steal them, if that's what you mean. <laughs> well, I, I'd better be getting along now. My, my wife will be expecting me. She's sort of used to having me around. I imagine she is, Mr. Jensen. <laughs> Please accept my heartiest best wishes for both of you. Oh, thank you, Miss Brooks. May I remind you to be prompt in opening the school? I wouldn't want Mr. Conklin and the students to be kept waiting. Oh, they won't be, Mr. Jensen. And be sure and let me know whether your wife has a boy or a girl. I will, Miss Brooks. Good day, Mr. Jensen. Yes, it is, isn't it? <laughs> I'll just put this key on the hall table here so I don't forget it. Oh, Connie, will you come into the kitchen a moment, please? Yes, Mrs. Davis. I'm all finished with the dishes, and I'd like to leave immediately. Now, Connie, when you make wake Minerva, be sure to wake her gently. She's been quite sensitive about noise ever since she fell into my new Speed Queen washing machine. <laughs> I don't know why. It did a very good job on her. <laughs> but I'll be careful not to upset her, Mrs. Davis. Oh, here's Minerva now. Good morning, dear. How did you sleep? Meow, meow. I'm glad. Well, I'll be running along now. You'll give Minerva her milk, won't you, Connie? Oh, certainly, Mrs. Davis. Remember me to your sister Angela, if I you will. remember. <laughs> I will, dear. Uh, put a little cream in with the milk. She likes it that way. All right, Mrs. Davis. That is, if we have any cream. Here we are. No, no cream left. She'll have to drink it black. <laughs> I'll just pour the milk into this dish. There you are, Minerva. There isn't any cream left, Minerva. We'll have cream for you tomorrow. Drink that milk or I'll turn on the washing machine. <laughs> I'm on my way out anyway. Oh, come in, Mr. Boynton. Oh, thanks, Mrs. Davis. You're leaving the house so early? Yes. Uh, let's see if I've got everything. My purse, my hat, my shoes, and... Oh, yes, uh, now I'm all set. You'll find Miss Brooks in the kitchen, Mr. Boynton. I'm going over to see my sister, Angela. Oh, say hello for me. Hello. <laughs> I mean to your sister, Mrs. Davis. Oh, Thank you, Mr. Boynton. Goodbye. Good morning, Miss Brooks. Hello, Mr. Boynton. Would you like a cup of coffee? Oh, yes, thanks. Will you join me? I'd love to. Yeah, I'll pour. I uh, ran into Mr. Jensen down the block. Cream? Yes, please. He told me his wife was going to have a baby. I think large families are wonderful. When I meet the right man, if I haven't already met him, I'll want to get married and have several children of my own. Sugar? Yes, Mr. Boynton. I mean, yes. Oh, say, look at the clock. We'd better hurry with this coffee. Oh, you're so right, Mr. Boynton. And before we go, I'd better unlock the back door. Mrs. Davis invariably forgets her key. Oh, she didn't forget it this time. When she was leaving, I noticed she took a little fat one off the hall table. She took the little fat... Mr. Boynton, that was the key to the school. Mr. Jensen asked me to open up this morning. Oh, no, Miss Brooks. Oh, yes, Mr. Boynton. Oh, gosh. Pretty soon, Mr. Conklin and all the students will be arriving at school. Nobody will be able to get in. Mr. Conklin will be furious at you. Don't remind me. I can see the sparks flashing from his tongue already. <laughs> Gee, I'm in quite a spot, aren't I? Aren't I? 
That shows how upset I am, Mr. Boynton. An English teacher should never be guilty of saying, aren't I? Uh, but, Miss Brooks, what about school? Suppose we hurry over and explain Aren't is things. merely the contraction of are not. Therefore, one who says, aren't I, is guilty of saying, are not I. Miss Brooks, <laughs> what about... The correct form is, am I not? Aren't I being nothing more than an absurd and altogether ungrammatical affectation. Miss Brooks, what about school? I ain't going. <laughs> Starring Eve Arden will continue in just a moment, but first, here is Vern Smith. Here's wonderful news, ladies. Wonderful, wonderful news. Now there's something thrillingly new in Palm Olive Soap's famous beauty lather. Yes, something thrillingly new. Palm Olive's famous beauty lather now brings you new fragrance, new charm, new allure. Millions of women will prefer beauty lather Palm Olive over all other leading toilet soaps the minute they try it. For Palm Olive Soap's famous beauty lather, now has a new, clean, flower-fresh fragrance for new allure, new charm. So ladies, forget all other beauty care and use Palm Olive Soap the way doctors advise for a lovelier complexion. Just stop improper cleansing and instead wash your face with Palm Olive Soap three times a day, massaging Palm Olive's wonderful beauty lather onto your skin for 60 seconds each time to get its full beautifying effect. Then rinse. That's all. All types of skin, young, older, oily, respond to it quickly. Don't wait another day to try Palm Olive's Beauty Lather. You'll be thrilled by its new fragrance, new charm, new allure. Thrilled again by the fresher, brighter complexion doctors prove may soon be yours. For new loveliness all over, use big bath size Palm Olive in tub or shower. <laughs> Well, I finally decided to face the music, even though I knew that the music would consist of some angry pear-shaped tones emanating from Mr. Conklin's pear-shaped head. <laughs> By the time Mr. Boynton dropped me off, there were so many students milling around dear old Madison High that it looked like a training school for young pickets. <laughs> I found Mr. Conklin pacing up and down outside his office windows. Ah, there you are, Miss Brooks. Good morning, Mr. Conklin. It's about time. Now then, if you'll give me the key... The key? Yes, the key. Let me have it. I'll let you have it as quickly as possible. There is no key. <laughs> no key? But Mr. Jensen was supposed to He be... did. But then I put it on a table in the hall, and Mrs. Davis took it with her to her sister Angela's. It wasn't really my fault, Mr. Conklin. I, I don't just... care whose fault it was. We've got to get into this school, and quickly. You see, Miss Brooks, the Board of Education is presenting Madison High with a plaque today. A plaque? For what, Mr. Conklin? It's an award for the best attendance record of any high school in the county. Really? Why, that's wonderful. Congratulations, Mr. Conklin. Thank you, Miss Brooks, but I'd rather receive your felicitations inside my office instead of out here. That's your phone, isn't it, Mr. Conklin? Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> But thanks to your far-sighted suggestion after those two boxes of chalk disappeared, ours is the only school with a double lock on the front door and bars on all the windows. <laughs> I can't get in to answer it. Well, maybe it isn't important, Mr. Conklin. I think I know who's calling, Miss Brooks. It's the Board of Education. They want to know when I'm going to hold an assembly. An assembly? Yes, Miss Brooks. They want to give us a plaque for perfect attendance and nobody's in school to answer the phone. <laughs> oh, please, Mr. Conklin, try to be calm. We'll think of something. Maybe I could call Mrs. Davis when she gets to her sister's. No, Angela has no phone. I know. I'll go out to her house. You'll do no such thing, Miss Brooks. You'll need every teacher we've got to set up classes on the athletic field. Hello, Daddy, Miss Brooks. Don't you think it's time we were getting into school? Now, that's an excellent suggestion, Harriet. Miss Brooks hasn't got the key. Wait a minute. You drive, don't you, Harriet? Well, certainly, Miss Brooks. Can I go somewhere for you? You'll stay right here, Harriet. There must be someone else you can send, Miss Brooks. How about my dreamboat, Walter Denton? Dreamboat? <laughs> <laughs> He's an idiot. <laughs> Walter's a wonderful driver. He'll pick up the key wherever it is and have it back here in nothing flat. Nothing but his head, that is. <laughs> the 
Well, maybe that's a good idea. Miss Brooks, get Denton to drive out to wherever Mrs. Davis is. At least his brain is expendable. All right, Mr. Conklin. I'll look for Walter and ask him to go after the key. You won't have to look for him, Miss Brooks. Walter's coming over right now. Well, if it isn't my light of love. <laughs> Greetings, fair Harriet. The bonjour, Miss Brooks. And to you, esteemed principal, felicitations. <laughs> Mr. Conklin, catch a rancid wheat cake at breakfast? Uh, Mr. Conklin's not in a very good mood this morning, Walter. You see, today's the day the Board of Education is supposed to award Madison a plaque for its fine attendance record. Well, what's bad about that? Let's get into the jolly institution and snag that little beauty. Uh, I'd love to, Walter. Maybe we could melt you down and pour you through the bar. <laughs> now, I'm going to inform the other teachers of our dilemma, Miss Brooks. Please get expendable here on his way. <laughs> Come with me, Harriet. Yes, Daddy. Bye, Walter. Adieu, lovely one. And lovely one's father. Dad! <laughs> you know, Miss Brooks, there are times when I sense an animosity in that man. Now, what do you suppose could cause such a reaction? Hatred, for one thing. <laughs> now, please listen carefully, Walter. You know Mrs. Davis's sister, Angela, don't you? Oh, sure, Miss Brooks. I gave Mrs. Davis a ride out there last week. Good. Do you remember where she lives? Well, it's way on the other side of town. I didn't notice the address, but I think I could find it. Uh, there was a mailbox on the corner. <laughs> a mailbox? Isn't there anything else that would help you identify it? Well, nothing outstanding. What color was the house? I don't remember the background color, but the stripes were purple. <laughs> I guess I could find it all right, Miss Brooks. But I wish you'd tell me what this is all about. Well, it's about the key to the school, Walter. Mrs. Davis walked off with it this morning, and it's up to you to go and get it back. Now, just ask her for the little fat key on a blue ribbon. Your wish is my command, Miss Brooks. My eager jalopy is champing at the curb. What kind of a car is that anyway, Walter? Oh, it has no name, Miss Brooks. Just a slogan. A slogan? Yeah. You know how they call the new huts in the car you step down into? Yes. Well, this is the box you back away from. <laughs> well, Miss Brooks, it's over an hour since Denton left, and he's still not back with that key. I'm sure it won't be much longer, Mr. Conklin. Here goes that phone again. I wish Mr. Stone would stop calling my office. I know one way to stop him, Mr. Conklin. We can go to the malt shop next door and call him. That way you can stall him off till Walter gets back with the key. Oh, that's not a bad idea. Better than standing around listening to that phone. Come on, Miss Brooks. Well, here we are, Mr. Conklin. Martin's malt shop. Madison's unofficial annex. <laughs> After you, Miss Brooks. Well, if it isn't Miss Brooks. Hi, Marty. Sneak away from the ogre for a little fizz water? No, the ogre is along today. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Conklin, just a little nickname I picked up from the kids. Why, I'm surprised at you, Marty. Nobody at Madison calls Mr. Conklin by anything but his right name. Well, I'm happy to know that, Miss Brooks. Oh, here's the phone booth right over here, Pear Shape. Uh, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> I'll, uh, dial the Board of Education for you. School day, school day, dear old golden rule. Board of Education, Mr. Stone speaking. Uh, Mr. Conklin calling you, Mr. Stone. One moment, please. Here you are, Mr. Conklin. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Stone. Is that you, Conklin? Uh, yes, it is, Mr. Stone. I might as well have a Coke while I'm waiting. Well, it's about time. I was beginning to think that Madison High School had slid into the sea. <laughs> well, uh, I, I had to step out of my office for a minute, Mr. Stone, but... I'm back in it now. Yes, sir. Shh. What's that? What's what? Osgood, are you hissing me? <laughs> oh, no, sir. No, uh, we, we must have a bad connection. It's a terrible connection. You say you're in your office? Uh, yes, sir. I'll call you right back. Yeah, but, Mr. Stone... And for heaven's sakes, don't disappear again. Goodbye. Uh, wait, Mr. Stone. Wait, uh, Mr... Wait, Mr... St this is the last straw. What did he say, Mr. Conklin? He said he's going to call me right back. Now I'm in deeper than ever. Oh, we'll figure some way out of this. After all, Mr. Stone is only a human being. A human being who happens to be the head of our local board of education. Oh, this is awful. Excuse I... me, Mr. Conklin. Yes, 
me, Daddy, but the telephone in your office is ringing. The telephone in your office is ringing. <laughs> what do you suggest, Harriet? Well, I don't know, Daddy, but don't worry. I'm sure Walter won't fail us. He'd better not. Now, Miss Brooks, I'm going over to inspect the classes that have been set up on the athletic field. I want you to call the board and talk to Mr. Stone. Me? But what should I tell him? Improvise. Oh, but Mr. Conklin... Call him off, Miss Brooks. I'm counting on you. Oh, great. Well, I might as well get it over with. What are you going to tell Mr. Stone, Miss Brooks? I don't know yet, Harriet. I'll wait till he answers. Hello, Mr. Stone speaking. Hello, Mr. Stone. This is Miss Brooks at Madison High. Yes? I'm calling from Mr. Conklin's office, Mr. Stone. He asked me to call you. Give me a double strawberry temptation, Mark. Oh, he did. What about, Miss Brooks? About his not being able to talk to you for a while. (laughs) What in the world is that sound? Sound? Oh, that's the radiator, Mr. Stone. It's defective. Radiator? In tune? Well, they're just testing it. As a matter of fact, that's why Mr. Conklin can't talk to you. One of our students was just in his office, and this jet of hot water started out of the radiator, and Mr. Conklin jumped in front of the boy to save him and accidentally knocked out six of the boy's teeth. (laughs) Man, that's too bad, Miss Brooks. That radiator should be fixed immediately. Oh, it was, Mr. Stone. But Mr. Conklin doesn't want to leave the boy's side. He's he's on the couch across the room. He's giving him a transfusion. A transfusion? Of teeth? Oh, didn't I tell you? He also cut his foot. Uh, He's in a bad way, Mr. Stone. We're hoping for the best. Uh, Where is the boy now? In a malted milk machine? Nothing off. Uh, there must be somebody else on this line, Mr. Stone. I'd better call you back. No, Miss Brooks, don't bother. I don't quite know what's going on at Madison today, but I'm going to find out. You tell Mr. Conklin that I'll call him in exactly ten minutes. If he isn't at the phone prepared to carry on a rational conversation at that time, well, he'd better be. Uh, But, Mr. Stone... Goodbye, Miss Brooks. Goodbye. And goodbye, Mr. Conklin. Well? Well, nothing. It's worse than ever. Mr. Stone's going to call again in ten minutes. Wait a minute, Harriet. I think I've got an idea. What is it, Miss Brooks? First, I'll get Marty to hang an out-of-order sign on this phone booth, and then I'll call Mr. Conklin's office in five minutes and leave the receiver off the hook on this end. Well, what'll that do? Well, that will ensure Mr. Stone's receiving a busy signal when he calls in ten minutes, and that's what he'll continue to receive until Walter returns with the key. Miss Brooks, you're a positive genius. Please, Harriet, don't exaggerate. I'm not a bit positive. (laughs) Please calm down, Daddy. I'm sure Walter will be back any minute. Oh, that Denton. Instead of sending him for the key, I should have sent some other idiot. I should have gone myself. He's nothing but an unreliable laggard, a detestable, nauseating, blundering knucklehead. Excuse me, Mr. Conklin. Here's the key. Bless you, boy. (laughs) Don't stand there, Denton. Open the door. Yes, sir. There you are, sir. Out of the way, out of the way. Now to get that phone. It must be Mr. Stone. Well, I'll just give him a piece of my mind. If he thinks he can hound me all day... Hello? Osgood Conklin speaking. Hello? Hello? There's no dial tone. Some lame brain must have called this number and left the receiver off the hook. Hello? 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 Mr. Hello. Conklin, Mr. Conklin, sir, I found this telegram under your door. Uh, that telegram? Let me see that. Uh, let's see. Well, it's from Mr. Stone. It says, Dear Osgood, realizing the futility of trying to reach you by telephone, I hereby inform you that the Board of Education has authorized you to suspend classes for the remainder of the school day in recognition of Madison's splendid attendance record. Gosh, Mr. Conklin, does that mean there's no more school today? Evidently, Walter. Now, please go out to the athletic field and inform the teachers and students of my decision to give them the rest of the day off. Uh, Yes, sir. Oh, before I go, I better bring you back the key. I left it in the door. Uh, Just leave it there. I've got a little work to clean up. I can get it on my way home. (laughs) 
Well, let's make the most of our afternoon off, Miss Brooks. I'd like to do something really exciting today, if you're game. Game? Miss Brooks, I'd like to take you to the zoo. <laughs> I'm afraid that's a little too gamey for me, Mr. Boynton. I'd, I'd much rather go to a movie. Say, we must be the last two people on the grounds. I feel like... Oh, excuse me a minute. Well, what's wrong, Miss Brooks? I just noticed the front door. Walter left the key in it. You know, the extra lock was my idea. Yes, I know. Mr. Conklin's been so worried about this key all day, I'm not going to take any chances. Well, what are you going to do, Miss Brooks? I'm going to lock up the school and mail this key to Mr. Conklin. As our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Only luster cream brings you K. Dumas' magic formula blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Gives loveliness lather even in hardest water. Glamorizes your hair... As you wash it, luster cream, not a soap, not a liquid, but a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, manageable. Gives new beauty to all hairdos or permanents. Four ounce jar, one dollar. Smaller sizes, either tubes or jars. Tonight, try luster cream shampoo. And be a dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, after I mailed the key, Mr. Boynton took me to the zoo. Then we had a nice Dutch dinner saw a very exciting movie, and wound up at Marty's Malt Shop. Well, give us a couple of Maltes, Marty. Coming right up, folks. That certainly was a terrifying picture, especially when Lucy starts to hear the voices. Oh, I don't know. Lots of manic depressives wind up like that. Hello, hello, hello. hello. Be beg pardon, hello. Mr. Boynton? No, I didn't say anything. Oh, I guess it's the effect of that movie. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Won't somebody answer me? Now, wait a minute. I'm not that far gone. <laughs> It's coming from the phone booth. I better see what that is. Well, that's funny. The receiver's still off the hook. I... Hello? Hello? Is that you, Miss Brooks? Yes. Mr. Conklin? It is indeed. <laughs> have, have you been trying to reach me, Mr. Conklin? I have indeed. Oh, if it's about the school, Mr. Conklin, you don't have a thing to worry about. I locked it securely before I left the campus. Nobody can possibly get in. That's not what I'm worried about, Miss Brooks. <laughs> I'm worried about getting out. You mean? Oh, no, you're not still. Yes, I'm still. Now get over here with that key. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. The key? Oh, Mr. Boynton, do you think you could lift me up? Well, of course, Miss Brooks. Good. Let's get down to the corner. I want you to slip me into the mailbox. <laughs> Next week, tune in to another Our Miss Brooks show, brought to you by Tom Ali Soap, Your Beauty Hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written and directed by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. Men, do you shave with a lather or brushless shave cream? Tom Olive Shaving Cream comes both ways, and whichever way you prefer to shave you'll find that using either Palm Olive Brushless or Palm Olive Lather Shaving Cream can bring you more comfortable, actually smoother shaves. Here's the proof. 2,548 men tried the new Palm Olive way to shave described on the tube. And no matter how they had shaved before, three out of every four got more comfortable, actually smoother shaves. Get Palm Olive Brushless or Palm Olive Lather Shaving Cream today. <laughs>
For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North, the exciting, fun-packed adventures of an amateur detective and his beautiful wife. Tune in Tuesday evening over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at this same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. Stay tuned now for Life with Luigi, which follows over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.